Welcome back to West of Loathing. I feel like basically the only place it makes sense to go is to the fridge factory. We got all these other locations that have been revealed, but we'll just go deal with that. You pass by an alley with two women wearing grease-stained coveralls and welding masks who are slouching against the wall and sharing a cigarette. Is this Tin Lizzy again? They glare at you as you pass. Like, that looked like her. Uh, do you know what? Maybe it's because we dealt with the Doughboys. They're now gone. Like, maybe I should have wandered more and found more Doughboy encounters because that's potentially over and now we're dealing with these, like, metal people. Hey, isn't that the bastard that Aluminum Winnie was telling us about? They lower their masks and snap their fingers. The tips of their index fingers spark with white-hot flames. The Tin Lizzies have mages? Oh, that was their entire group thing, not one person. Oh, swell. Let's weld his tailpipe shut. I could rain on their parade with expired seltzer and just rust them up? You grab a can of seltzer out of your pocket and give it a hard shake. Water in the hole instead of fire. You hurl the can at the welder's feet where it explodes in a fizzing torrent that drenches them and extinguishes their flames. And then, you decide to beat feet out of there instead of sticking around to see their reactions. Yeah, that's probably a good plan. Some easy experience, I guess. Didn't even have to fight. Hi, hello, hello. Just having a great time back there. Alright, try to make a deal. There it is. That's I did cross over into Moxie. Having enough Moxie. I could still just try to fight them. Yeah, I don't want to spend any meat. I just want to fight them. <laughs> if I die, then so be it. Aw, oh, nuts. Uh, that's not great, is it? <laughs> but I have my raised AP. Ooh. I, I, I don't have any grenades or anything like that. Three damage to everyone. He can't do what he was planning to do. Okay, because he was going to attack Nurdle, probably. Uh, straight up eight damage. And reducing my moxie. Not that my moxie matters a lot here. D gonna... <laughs> Mob Capo going to deliver an inspiring speech. I don't really want to allow him to do that. But this is what most worries me currently. Alright, you have the second least amount of health. I, I think I'm just going to focus on trying to take people out. So... Zimzam mozzarella. I'm gonna shoot at him twice and Then I'm going to just straight up get rid of the the pepper gunner He has an, a low enough health that I can one shot him. So yeah, I'd rather you know deal with that No one's hurt yet. So I might as well squeeze in a flap slap All right once we get it down to two on two we should be in much better position Ah, oh, nice. I don't even remember what grants me health regeneration at this point. I should, like, review my my items, because it's really good to have. Don't entirely know what it's all about. I'm gonna shoot for 8 damage. 9 damage. Uh, you have slightly less health. Be a little easier to deal with you. Oh, I, I'm down to no AP already? I would have only used 1, I thought. Well, shucks, I guess that a little bit affects what I was planning to do. Oh, that's probably my stats being lowered or something. Uh, yeah. I, I, at this point, at this stage in the battle, I don't think it matters quite as much. Let's just... Ooh. Yeah, see, so you're not hurt yet, so I'll, I'll heal you up next round. For now, carry on with your slapping. Maybe she'll level up soon, and then I'll have... We'll have more skills, more options, because right now... It's, can't do a ton. It's helpful. It's great to have. Oh, you only regain one AP per round? Is that standard? Because, like, that makes the additional AP much less valuable. But at least you can do things like lower stats up top. Oh, it only deals one damage right now because my moxie is, is destroyed, I think, probably, is why that sucked as bad as it did. Shoot. All right. Well, I still, I basically need to kill you because Gabby needs to, it's not a great distribution of, of damage, but I needed to use healing there. So quite, quite limited in what my options were. <laughs> it's one damage dealt, but I might as well do, maybe, maybe I should have just lowered his stats. It's fine. Be dead next turn. 
let's heal everyone up again. So I can I can deal with tough battles. I, I don't have to worry about it too hard. It's a little bit tougher than than I was prepared for, maybe, but there you go, Nerdle. Oh look, the cat's returned. Trying to climb up on shelves that you're not supposed to be up. Crazy cat. <laughs> uh, I felt like there was something that I wanted to check after that, or as a result of that. Can I see how close Gabby is to like leveling up or anything? I don't think that's really something you can check. Nerdle, you're you're looking great, doing okay. It doesn't really say an actual level or anything like that. Don't go on the shelves. I, she's getting kicked out of the room. This is Banjo. Cute cat. Lover. Has a lot of energy. Too much energy. So much energy all the time. Not kicked out, just temporarily distracted. She's probably going to cause trouble again in like five minutes. <laughs> Alright, well I got to keep all the money. Happy about that. It's a refrigerator truck, but not the kind you're probably thinking of. It can if two counts as a fleet, they have a whole fleet of these things. Wow, it's really cold over here. You need, you need cold armor to head back. Oh, there's like a toolbox. Uh, it's left here to rust. What's inside? Self-adhesive rivets. It's always good to have some of these on hand in case you need to do some emergency pants repair. Adds physical armor to a pair of pants. And sharpening stone, this is such a high quality sharpening stone that it even works on things that don't have blades. You know, I just got these pants that add mysticality. Uh, I probably will hang on to them for at least a little while. Yeah, I think I think I will apply those to the, the new pants. Yes, I will add those. You place them on the pants, making them pants with more rivets on them than they had before. Excellent! As for the sharpening stone on my barbecue tongs, I'm a little bit expecting to find a better weapon, like, any moment now. I've been using that a while already. Opening this door would make a lot of noise and draw a lot of attention. Also, you don't know how to open it. I, I, I guess uh, there's no one in here. This workbench doesn't seem big enough for refrigerator repair repairs. Make some stuff. You don't have the materials for combat items. A chest of tools for fixing upright refrigerators. Spray on asbestos. Oh yeah, that makes it way better. Safe and effective fireproofing in a convenient aerosol can. Add hot armor to pants. Another sharpening stone. An anarchist's hardware. A collection of pipes and cannon fuses and, well, mostly just pipes and cannon fuse. Anarchy is pretty straightforward. Just making pipe bombs? Is that what it's describing to me? I will use one on the barbecue tongs since I have two now. You sharpen your barbecue tongs to a razor's edge. So, you know, just a little bit stronger and I'll hang on to the other one for the future. These fridges are brand new and empty and thus quite boring. Well then, I won't spend too much time looking through them. Crane control. The control booth is locked from the inside. Somebody's gonna be in big trouble. It looks like something's going down over there. Uh, we're gonna hide and watch underneath this? Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna lower that thing down on us. It seemed like it would crush, crush us. Oh God, D -d -d Dark Noel. What are you doing here? Surprise inspection. Is this like evil Santa Claus? Holy shit, what just happened? Oh, interesting. What the heck? Yeah, did you just get turned into like a void specter or something? Oh, it broke that open. No time to check this out. You should go see what is going on over yonder. There seems to be a bit of a standoff between the mob guys and the other ones. Cautiously approach. The lady in the weird crimbo hat, that's going all the way back to Kingdom of Loathing, glares at you as you approach. I don't recall inviting you to this party. Are you going to introduce yourself? Grammy of the Valley, Rin Richardson, Puddin' Tame. Well, I'll use my real name. What's wrong with your hat? Nothing at all. A crimbo hat is appropriate for all seasons. It's all spooky and, like, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> you see stars through it? I I'll use the haunted one. I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. Oliver, dear, 
are you busy? See, that's the text we saw before where we thought the the statement made was along the lines of like, oh, someone scribbled over this and, and ruined it, so it's hard to read. Uh, be a deer and kill this guy, would you? Uh-oh. The Krimbo lady smiles and leaves the same way she came in, in a horrible, weird spiral of negative space. The weird shadow monster that was once a person turns to face you. Hello? Hello? Hello! Shadow begin to gather around him. Abstract, menacing shapes. Hey, uh, hey, you mob guys, can I get you to give me a hand with this? Oh yeah, that totally happens, I think, sometimes in West of Loathing, that, like, if you have a common enemy, you team up, but then you end up fighting them after anyways? Back away and look for another solution? Nah, help me out. Considering the newly terrifying Mr. Gluck is between us and the exit, seems like we got no choice. Take Gluck on. Oh, he's just immediately getting to it. Shadow bonk. Oh no, nerdle. He's got to deal with the shadow spider as well. Yeah, heal yourself up, buddy. 30, 30 health. Gonna deal 10 damage. Uh, it has a, a, a bite and deals poison. Shadowy orb intends to non-corporally bonk Grammy the Valley and do spooky damage and reduce all stats. The reducing of all stats is a thing that I'm pretty uh, not okay with. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm going to do is rock forto is get rid of both of those. Lowering of all stats is like such an insanely huge disadvantage in this game. Oh, did it create? It like collapses into shadow, which is pretty cool. Wow, damn, that was a lot of damage dealt. Let's let's heal everyone up. All work together here. Oh, that poison, sorry, Nerdle, you're just so boned. <laughs> I just don't have what it takes to heal you up. I do, but you know, you don't have that much health, so I don't think it would be money well spent. I, ah, oh, nice, I can deal enough damage. No, not quite, because I can only use it once, because I only have one AP, damn it. Well. I think I should focus fire him a little bit. Someone will take out the spider. Not before he gets killed, but you know. <laughs> I did what I could. Oh, come on, you're supposed to you're supposed to go kill the spider, man. <laughs> Not that's like Jay Jonah and Jameson. Go and kill the spider man! He's pictures don't cut it anymore. It's time to put that guy in the ground. He's been getting away with it for too long, that menace. That was a cool battle. With these shadow creatures defeated, the two mob guys brush themselves off. Whew, this caper has got me all balled up. And how? This whole scene is nutty as a squirrel's mistress. Come on, let's am-scray. They tip their hats to you and make for the front door. For the door, investigate what's left of that guy. I thought I would have to fight them as well. He mostly dissolved into a cloud of weird shadow stuff, but there are a few objects on the ground. A pocket watch, a bank pouch, and an official looking document of some sort. These are going to be weird ass items. Dangerous pocket watch. The ticking of this pocket watch sounds hollow and ominous. You don't like it. It's just wrong. Once per fight, what would I be able to do once per fight? S -s Skip a turn, slow things down, I don't know. Maybe that's more interesting than my stat lowering thing that I haven't been using that much. A bank pouch full of meat, any cash payment that's too small for a briefcase must be contained in a leather zipper pouch. It's the law. If I just open that up, do I just get money? <laughs> Is there anything else I could do with it? Deed to the speakeasy, a legal document regarding an illegal establishment. Do I just get to own the speakeasy? That's what I want. I just want to become a proprietor of illegal boozes. You take a quick look at the document. It turns out this glut guy was the owner of the speakeasy, and now you are, maybe. Is that how deeds work? Well, what do you know? I will check the pouch. You gained 300 meat? What a windfall. That's all that that was. Just wrong. I'm gonna try it. I basically have to try it. Too interesting to pass up. Now these are all haunted, this booze looks dangerous, and it also appears to be tainted with some kind of sinister magical energy. Uh oh, this fridge is plugged in. A little note on it says, experimental, not for lunches. Are we gonna go into some refrigerator void? 
The fridge has been fitted with an experimental automatic ice cube maker. Unfortunately, it's made one single gigantic ice cube that fills the entire fridge. I guess if you ever need a block of ice as big as you are, here's where you can get it. That will surely come up at some point. I will attempt to keep that in mind, I assume. Do you know what? Uh, fridge, your personal notes. Write a note. Uh, fridge factory giant block of ice. That seems good. Yes, record this note. Close. Close everything. That's it, The navigating of that is like a few too many clicks, I think, relative to what it ends up being. You don't have to leave the building to open your map, by the way. Oh, okay. What did I just... Oh, okay. It's just saying I, I can just leave from here if I feel like I've done everything. Which, I guess, w some of my next steps are to go to the speakeasy, take the pocket watch back to Jessica. Oh, right. That is like the haunted item. That was the whole reason I was here. Uh, then I will close it and I will just go back to the city. Either way, that's where I need to be headed. You stop dead in your tracks when you see three of those weird fishmen lurking in the mouth of the alley up ahead. They're peering around with their glistening, staring eyes and glurbling at each other quietly until one of them notices you. It and its two companions start stalking towards you, making wet growling sounds. Ah, oh, jeez, what even are you guys? Glurb? Well, are you evil invaders, or are you natives that were displaced by urban development seeking to reclaim what's rightfully yours? The fishmen confer briefly. Evil? <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. As long as we're on the same page. I could shove past them. I could just throw a grenade if I had one. I will just fight them. I assume I'll get more out of it by doing that, like, more directly. Uh, I can't kill him just by chucking things at him. Real close though, I, I can see what this is. Decrease Fishman Healer's mis Muscle Mysticality and Moxie by 13. This is a bad idea. Usable once per fight. Uh, I will hypnotize one of them. I gotta see, I gotta know. Look at the, the distant stare in his eyes. So now you're all hypnotized. I'll, I'll, I'll attack the other one to see what happens here. Uh, yeah, you can you can give him a flap slap. Mostly. But I just wanted to know what would happen. It seemed like nothing happened. Maybe post-battle? It really seemed like nothing. <laughs> you might say you've reduced those chumps to chum, but despite that being a pretty good fish pun, it would also imply the existence of much larger fishmen who would be attracted to the bait. I don't think you want that. Yeah, you don't want any of the shark men showing up. Fish liver oil. The fishmen carry little vials of this stuff around to protect their skin from the open air. Increase muscle by one until you use another potion. This continually, hey? I guess if you're gonna wander around out in the open, then yeah, that's gonna create different limitations <laughs> on how much time you can spend above water. You gotta start busting out that oil. Well, I know if I go to the main place, then I'll open up a quest that'll have to do with uh, D haunting the pocket watch. And maybe, maybe that just is what I should go do. But I figured I would visit here first and deal with the, the lease. Is that the word I want? Hey, it's you again. You find Oliver. Um, yes. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that. Oliver is gone. The handoff went extremely bad. Badly. Yeah, that too. You go over the events at the fridge factory. Fancy Dan makes a variety of faces at various points in your story, because Fancy Dan is a good listener. Show him the deed. That's what I wanted. He skims it. Hmm. Says here that ownership of the speakeasy is automatically transferred to whoever has physical possession of this deed. Huh. Is that legal? None of this is legal. That's true, it isn't a legal speakeasy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to mourn the old boss and another one to celebrate the new one. Too soon, Dan. Nah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we ought to change the name since, well, Oliver's place is no longer Oliver's place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? Well, you could go traditional and just call it Grammy's place with something hip like the purple door. 
or something incisive and avant-garde like, I don't know, the Nobilese Oblige. I, why, why would you make it that? I don't know. I want to name it something else. I wish there was a way to feed this into the audience and have you guys like pitch me on what this should be named. Uh, instead, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this opportunity to shout out a specific commenter and viewer, uh, Isabella. She's been watching the channel for something like three or four years, I think at this point, has consistently commented on such a wide variety of videos and I've just always appreciated that uh, dedication and willingness to try out new things rather than like a narrow selection of videos. And so it, I'll pay some respect to that. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Isabella. Now to business. To business? We make the beer in house, so that's safe. But we're out of everything else, and based on your story, I'd say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Yeah. If you can find booze or mixers or garnishes, bring it back here. Any idea where to get started with that? No, but you might check with Barnaby. I don't know who that is. Dan points at the milky-eyed sod at the table by the wall. Oh, that's the guy I just kept buying drinks for, I think. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. He might know where you can find what you're looking for. Well, thanks. Oh, what do you have to drink? Beer? I'll have a beer then. Excellent choice. Keep it simple. Bottoms up. You drink the beer. You've had better beer, but you've definitely had worse. I don't... That, that might just be raised... Well, what if I have another drink? I'll have another beer. Surely I don't raise that twice, right? Uh, so, like if I were to just leave now, look at my character sheet, max AP 15, the beer, I like I, I probably already had that. I think I did, so it, it's separate from potions, it would need other booze to replace it, so I think I already had that, so it's, it's nothing. Well, Barnaby, maybe you actually have something to say this time, he turns his head towards you and smiles. I buy him a drink again, I guess, and await his prognostication. After a few moments and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. The lake is deep enough to drown dreams, but not the sins of the grandfather. This is the stuff I've already gone through before, but maybe I can buy him enough to learn something new. <laughs> For those who can read them, the signs are there, right here in this very room. Okay, I'll look for that. Then they try, but they'll never dam up the flow. Not the sins of the grandfather. This is the same thing, right? He's looping back around already. They'll dam up the flow, and one more time. Okay, those, he only has those three things. Oh, the spittoon! That was a total. Was that not there before? It was totally a huge, ridiculous running gag in West of Loathing. It's been placed at a really challenging height. Hey, Dan, your spittoon is kind of inconvenient. Nah, nah, baby, that spittoon isn't for spitting in. That's gone out of style now that mass-produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. Nope, that's a bona fide historical artifact. What? Really? That's right, it belonged to a famous adventurer from Frisco just before the turn of the century. Oh, was my character from Frisco? Is that why that was familiar? <laughs> really? Who? Well, nobody's exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumfler Furperdink. It's a straight, strong theory because there's one thing we know about that cat, it's that he loved spittoons. But other people say it belonged to a fella by the last name of Thurlian. And a whole lot of people claim it belonged to a whole lot of other people. <laughs> Everyone playing this game who played West of Loathing is gonna claim it belonged to them. But there's one thing we know for sure about this spittoon. Whose ever it was, they didn't use it for spitting into. They wore it as a hat. What? Ew, gross. <laughs> right? They sure got into some weird stuff back then. Yeah, no kidding. All right, signs around the room that can be read. Is there? Are there literal signs pasted anywhere? Well, I should be able to just go through now that I own the place, right? Is that not the case? That here's the signs. Maybe, maybe I need to make note of what the signs specifically are. He's talking about the the lake and the grandfather and the what have you, and I, I honestly, 
I really have no idea how I'm supposed to connect that back up to the outside world. View side quests, I don't have any. I'm just supposed to talk to Jessica, but now I especially have not left room for that. So it is time to go do some wandering. As you're walking down one of Ocean City's residential streets on the way to where you're going, you hear eerie music coming from the upstairs window of a nearby house. Eerie music house? You know what? Let's go. Zimmer's house. We've ignored all these other places, but we're going to this one. This seems like a pretty normal house in a pretty nice neighborhood, but there's something odd about it. Some sort of uncomfortable energy that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Maybe it's something to do with that weird droning tone you hear coming from inside, like a pained, inhuman moan, constantly rising in pitch. Maybe that's it. Yeah, it does seem terrible. Oh, is it one of the never-ending escalating? There's a word for it that hopefully I'll recognize if it comes up, but you, like, layer two sounds on top of each other, and as one is ending, the other one starts back over, and so it's constantly, they're, like, following each other, rising in pitch, and it just sounds like infinitely escalating sound. You knock, but hear no response, so you're, you know is your way inside. The eerie sound is even louder in here. It seems to be coming from upstairs. Also, the owner's interior design sensibilities are a little strange. It's a lot of uh, musical notes. A bunch of books about music theory. Even the most basic one would be totally beyond you. A dusty, disused chess set. It's a day stand, not a night stand. <laughs> Tea time was a long time ago. There's nothing left here but stains. The plate rack is a statement piece, and the statement is, I have too many plates. This cabinet is full of backup plates. A shelf full of trophies from music competitions and a cabinet full of sheet music. Examine one of them. You pull out a sheet, but it's all in German. Und du kannst kein Dutch gasprichen. Just gasprichen. Nope. Not even close. The door is locked. I'm sure that's a wonderful little pun. A German pun of sorts, but I got nothing to go off of. A staircase leading up to where the sound is coming from. Oh, hey, you're just, you're just making it up here yourself, hey? A tired-looking man is playing a cello here. Wh who are you? Why are you in my house? Sorry for intruding, but I heard the music, and I guess I have an intrusive nature. My name's Grammy of the Valley. Well, I'm Ernst Zimmer. Forgive me for not stopping, but it is vital that I continue playing. Uh, I was wondering if Zimmer tied into that. It appears it's called a shepherd tone, the thing I was thinking of. I don't know if there's German downstairs. This guy related to Hans Zimmer. I feel like maybe Zimmer is just a common German last name. I have no idea. What are you doing? There is a, a darkness beneath my house. Did you check the fuse box? No, I. it's probably that then. Listen to me. I had a dream, a premonition of a dark rift appearing in my basement and growing until it swallowed the entire house, and then the neighborhood, and then the world. It sounds wonderful. Quite the dream. Surely it was just a dream, though. It sounds wonderful. It was not just a dream. I went downstairs to check the basement, and there is indeed a rift. As of now, it is still small. I must keep playing this cello to prevent it from growing any lar larger. How does that help? Do you mind if I take a look? I'm sure there's a rational explanation. I do want to know why he thinks that'll help. The bass reverberation reverberates, the bass vibration reverberates downward, and is focused by the circle of furniture downstairs. This resonance inhibits the rift. Huh. I don't really get it, but okay. You a physicist or something? No, I'm a cellist. I cannot explain how I knew this would work. Uh, okay. Do you mind if I take a look? Very well. I cannot blame you for wanting to see it with your own eyes. You will have to reach into my pocket and take the key to the basement yourself as I require both hands to play. The Zimmer Basement Key. Please do not get too close to the rift. Alright. Well, I wish I would have maybe just used the mysticality option, but I, I thought I could do both. Let's, let's just rush down there and take a look. Now I've started this whole thing, I might as well see it through, right? Box of moldy sheet music. Oh, collect the mold. Geez, these songs must really stink. The festulant grulch. Grulch is quite the word. This is definitely the most fest fustulant of the grulches you're carrying around. Everything on the shelf is either evaporated or expired. This must be where Zimmer keeps all his rubble. Huh, there's some kind of black rift or portal or something on the floor over there. 
Maybe you shouldn't get too close to it. Do get too close to it! Well, it's your funeral, if there's any of you left to have a funeral with. On closer inspection, it seems like less of a rift and more of a pool of some thick black tar-like substance. Where did it come from? The only thing nearby is a shelf of old basement junk. Check the bottom of the shelf. Or do I check the top? Check the top first, in case it spilled down. The top shelf has a few old tins of varnish, and a big bucket of tar. As you watch, a drip of tar slowly leaks out the hole onto the bottom of the bucket and plops into the puddle below. Mystery solved. I can't- can I check any of the other- I- I guess I should have worked in the other direction. It's a puddle of tar. Try to fish in it. <laughs> well, that guy's gonna feel real silly. Gob of tar? It's a glob of tar you fished out of a larger glob of tar. Increase the damage of your melee weapon attack by three until you use another potion. Three damage. The tar puddle is too empty to fish in right now. <laughs> right now. Could get bigger. I currently, in my list of uh, effects, perks, what have you, just have plus one mysticality. Which otherwise, it's already at five, which is pretty damn high. And so maybe I should just raise my damage. Increase the damage. What else? Yeah. Oh, melee weapon. Yes, it is melee. I do have a melee weapon. Then I will I will grab it. Consuming it will replace lucidity. I will do it. Sticky hands. It's much easier to grip your weapon now, but much harder to put it down. Be careful not to clap. You mean stickier than they already were. There's so much stickiness in the hands. Well, I think that is resolved. I thought I was going to get taken into some, you know, temporal rift again. That hasn't changed. Just wanted to confirm that a little bit. I guess he did organize things in a weird little circle down there, didn't he? He's still sawing away at that cello. Still at it? Yes. What was it you said you were doing again? I, I figured it out. You can stop now. It's Jake. I figured it out. Figured it out? What do you mean? The black rift in your basement isn't a rift at all. It's just a puddle created by a leaking bucket of tar. Tar. Oh my goodness, this is mortifying. I've been such a fool. Don't so be so hard on yourself. It was a pretty spooky coincidence after all. Well, at least I can stop playing this cello. I'm exhausted. Well, go ahead and rest. Don't worry, everything's fine. As soon as he stops, though, is it going to open up into some hellish rift? Talk to him. He's looking pretty nervous about the whole thing. Hello. Okay, but now now something's going to happen, right? Uh-oh, maybe convincing Zipper to stop playing his cello wasn't such a good idea after all. Okay. Things are kicking off. Things are getting weird. Now that they're getting spooky, maybe that is the appropriate time to cut off the episode. And we'll see how this all plays out next time. Plus, I should deal with that haunted pocket watch. Very haunted, spooky-oriented episode coming up, potentially. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. You know, pitch me an episode title, and I hope to see you again soon.